on the run and out of healthy options? Health to go. Save plastic takeout containers, fill them with peanut butter or hummus, and take along some raw vegetables. Bingo! How to adhere to a gluten-free, casein-free diet. A diet free of gluten, a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye, and casein, a milk protein, has shown promise in children with autism. Others report the regimen just makes them feel better. You will need family cooperation, a positive focus, advanced planning, and a support group. Optional, a food delivery service. Never change your diet without first consulting your physician. Step one, go slowly when switching to a GFCF diet and give yourself two months to completely convert. Going cold turkey from all your favorite foods at once might hamper future success. Step two, Enlist the whole family in the GFCF diet for your greatest chance of success. If everyone is eating the same thing, there's less chance of temptation. Milk substitutes include rice milk, almond milk, and hemp milk. Clarified butter can be used in place of regular butter. Step 3. Clean out your cupboards and rid your house of anything that contains gluten or casein. Read food labels carefully. Don't forget to check toiletries and other products for gluten and casein. Step 4. Shop at natural foods markets. Ask if they have a list of GFCF foods. Doing your own shopping and cooking ensures that you will avoid eating any wheat or dairy. Step five, focus on the healthy, new food choices you have instead of constantly reminding yourself what you can't eat. Turning the negative into a positive might inspire others to follow your lead or at least admire your attitude. Step six, locate restaurants in your area that offer gluten-free choices. Be clear about your needs when ordering. Mexican and Thai restaurants are a good bet. Use a GFCF food delivery service if cooking is not your thing. Step seven, join a support group for extra help. Some provide mentors to help you shop. Did you know? More than two million Americans have celiac disease, a genetic disorder in which gluten cannot be tolerated. How to avoid unhealthy foods that seem good for you. The supermarket is full of foods that sound healthy, but are actually full of fat, sugar, additives, and calories. Learn how to tell the good from the bad. You will need 100% whole wheat and whole grain foods, plain yogurt, and loose tea or tea bags. Optional, food with the whole grain stamp. Step one, beware of fat-free and reduced fat foods. Many are heavy on sugar and additives and therefore high in calories. Step two, don't be fooled by the word multigrain. Just because a product has a lot of different grains doesn't mean any of them are the healthy whole grain kind. Check the label. If the first ingredient is 100% whole wheat or whole grain, you're good. Look for products that bear the Whole Grains Council's Whole Grain Stamp of Approval, which means the item contains at least half a serving of whole grains. Step three, understand the term all natural. For meat and poultry, it means that the product has no artificial flavors or colors, synthetic ingredients, or chemical preservatives. For all other foods, the term is unregulated and used as a marketing tool rather than a guarantee that an item is unprocessed. Step four, eat plain yogurt. Otherwise, sugar has likely been added, making it more a sweet treat than a health food. Step five, most energy, protein, and granola bars are candy bars masquerading as health food. Stick to ones with at least four grams of fiber and 10 grams of protein, no more than 30 grams of carbs, and less than five grams of fat. Step six, brew your own tea beverages. Many of the commercial bottled and canned ones have enough sugar to qualify as cola and very little of the antioxidants found in fresh brewed tea. Step seven, pick foods marked organic if you wanna be sure that they're free of synthetic pesticides, antibiotics, and hormones, but they're not necessarily more nutritious than their non-organic counterparts. Did you know? The average muffin sold in supermarkets is nearly 500 calories, more than twice what it was 20 years ago. How to choose foods to boost your mood. A cupcake may briefly lift your spirits, but these dietary changes can keep you happier in the long run. You will need walnuts, fatty fish, foods rich in folic acid, chicken and turkey, complex carbohydrates, and sesame seeds. Optional, wild fish. Step one, munch on a handful of walnuts. They're a rich source of vitamin B6, which the body needs to produce serotonin, a brain chemical involved in staving off depression. Sunflower seeds and wheat germ are also good sources of B6. Step two, eat at least two servings of fish per week. 
The omega-3 fatty acids in seafood increase serotonin levels, and some research indicates that people who eat fish less than once a week have about a 30% higher incidence of depression. Wild fish has higher concentrations of omega-3s than farmed fish. Step 3. Eat foods that contain folic acid, also called folate, spinach, lentils, asparagus, and peas. Researchers have found a possible link between depression and low levels of this B vitamin. Step 4. Enjoy chicken and turkey. Both have tryptophan, an amino acid that is essential to the production of serotonin. Researchers have found that people who are deprived of tryptophan fall into a depression. Step 5. When you're feeling stressed, eat complex carbohydrates like whole grain breads and pasta. Carbs enable tryptophan to enter the brain. Step 6. Eat tahini or snack on sesame seeds. They're rich in the amino acid threonine, a deficiency of which has been linked to depression. Did you know? According to research, people who eat a Mediterranean-style diet, high in fruits, vegetables, and fish, are less likely to get depressed than those who eat mostly processed and fatty foods. How to choose healthy foods at the supermarket. Choose healthy foods with confidence next time you go to the supermarket using these helpful tips. You will need nutritional fact labels, fresh fruits and vegetables, fat-free or low-fat milk, lean meats and poultry, whole grain bread, olive, canola, corn, or sesame oil, and a grocery list. Step 1. Be package conscious. Read labels to determine the fat, sodium, calories, and other nutritional information. Visit FDA.gov to learn more about how to read nutrition facts labels. Step 2. Eat fresh, vibrantly colored fruits and vegetables, such as broccoli, peaches, spinach, berries, and carrots. Opt for the fruits and vegetables that are pre-washed or pre-cut to save you time if you're in a hurry. Step 3. Choose fat-free or low-fat milk. Look out for flavored milk such as chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. Flavored milk contains added calories and sugar. Step 4. Select pork and red meat with the least amount of fat, such as loin or round. Choose the breast when purchasing poultry, rather than the thighs and legs. Step 5. Look for breads that are whole grain and high in fiber, such as those containing oats, oatmeal, whole wheat, or buckwheat. The bread should contain at least 2 grams of fiber per slice. Step 6. Choose oil with the least amount of saturated fat, cholesterol, and trans fat. Use olive oil, canola oil, corn oil, or sesame oil. Step 7. Make a grocery list before you head to the store to prevent impulse buys, unless you're trying a new fruit or vegetable. Did you know? The first English food law came in 1202 when King John of England proclaimed the assize of bread, which prohibited the adulteration of bread with ingredients like ground peas and beans. How to choose healthy foods that help you lose weight. Choose one of these healthy foods to help you shed those unwanted pounds. You will need raw veggies, beans, peas, raisins, dried or frozen fruit, green tea, cinnamon, and wheat germ. Step 1. Save calories by adding raw veggies and dried fruit to salads instead of croutons, cheese, and bacon bits. Try fillers like beans, peas, raisins, and any other veggies you like. Use a low-fat or fat-free dressing to replace ones that are high in fat. Step 2. Eat dried fruit such as mango, papaya, or dates in place of a sweet piece of candy. Step 3. Sip on green tea. The antioxidants in the tea help burn fat and speed up your metabolism. Green tea also lowers your cholesterol. Step 4. Sprinkle a little cinnamon on your coffee, fruit, whole grain toast, or oatmeal to help control your blood sugar. Studies show that a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon a day can lower cholesterol, blood sugar, and triglyceride levels in people with type 2 diabetes. Step 5. Prepare a banana fruit smoothie by blending blueberries, a banana, wheat germ, and water in a blender for 30 seconds. Full of antioxidants, this homemade treat has fewer calories than a canned or store-bought smoothie. Step 6. Satisfy your sweet tooth by snacking on frozen blueberries, grapes, or bananas. Try this instead of ice cream or candy when you get a sweet craving. Train yourself to reach for something tasty and healthy, and it'll soon be second nature. Did you know? In 2010, experts estimated that Americans spent approximately $30 billion a year on slim-down products and programs. How to choose healthy snacks. Eating between meals can actually be good for you, as long as you select your mini meals wisely. You will need a 200 calorie limit, the 35-10-35 rule, protein, fiber, and low sodium. Step one, watch the numbers. A snack shouldn't have more than 200 calories. 
Step 2. Follow the 35-10-35 rule. Choose an item that gets no more than 35% of its calories from fat, no more than 10% of its calories from saturated fat, and is no more than 35% sugar by weight. Fruits, cheese, nuts, and seeds are exempt. Beware of snacks marked fat-free. They're often loaded with sugar or sodium. Step 3. Make sure the snack includes protein, which keeps you feeling full longer than carbohydrates alone. Step 4. Choose cereal and protein bars that are high in fiber, at least 3 grams per serving. Fiber helps the body digest food and metabolize fat. Step 5. Take it easy on the salt, an excess of which can lead to high blood pressure. Stick to snacks that provide less than 450 milligrams of sodium per serving. Step 6. Avoid protein bars that have more than 15 grams of sugar or 5 grams of fat. They're not much better than candy bars. Step 7. Factor in the calorie counts of your snacks once you sit down to a regular meal. Even the healthiest snacks can add pounds if you don't compensate for them elsewhere. Did you know? In one survey, women listed chips as their number one workplace snack food followed by chocolate and candy bars. How to develop healthy eating habits. Good health is just a matter of taking a new approach to eating and making simple changes. You will need cooking facilities, a shopping list, healthy foods, breakfast, healthy snacks, and water. Optional, books and internet access. Step one, cook and prepare your own meals as often as you can. This will help you avoid eating processed and fast foods which are higher in sodium and fat. Healthy, low-fat recipes and guidance are available in bookstores and on the internet. Step two, plan healthy meals and make a shopping list. Fill your cart with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grain foods, and lean meats. Step three, read nutrition labels. Pay attention to saturated fat, sodium, and sugar. The higher the numbers, the unhealthier they are. Step four, eat breakfast every day. Breakfast helps to rev up your metabolism. Make it a habit to eat something within the first hour after you wake up. Step five, try to eat small meals every three to four hours. Aim for three small balanced meals and two snacks. Step six, drink plenty of water every day. Water hydrates the body and aids the digestive system, and it's calorie free. Step seven, feel the difference in your body, more energy and stamina, as well as sharper thinking as you feed your body healthy foods. Did you know, a study found that more than 16% of US children and teens are obese.